What I have here is a Sega Genesis controller to USB adapter that I made using a Raspberry Pi Pico microcontroller. You can handle both three button and six button controllers. And the reason why I did this was because I wanted to play some Sega Genesis emulator games on, on an Android device. I had went and bought a uh, off the shelf adapter for it and I couldn't quite get it to work on Android itself. That's what led me to want to make my own. And this is actually a redux of a project that I did back in 2015 using an 8051 microcontroller. I was able to get as far as proving things out, but I never got around to polishing it up, and I didn't have a 3D printer back then. So, a few weeks ago I had begun to start polishing it up when the I got news of the Pico coming out, which I figured was the perfect thing for this project because it comes pre-assembled with a USB connector and a supply. Now back in 2015, I couldn't find very much documentation on how the Genesis controller worked, so I had a bit of a struggle getting started. And I wanted to post my findings somewhere, but I never got around to it. Since then, though, the website raspberryfield.life posted a fantastic article about how the six-button controller works. And I use this source quite a bit to help refresh myself on how things work. A link to it can be found in the description below. I highly recommend checking it out. Now, on the case itself, these are standard DB9 connectors that I got off of Amazon. And on the other side is the micro USB connector from the Pico itself. So let me get this stuff out of the way and I will open it up. So as you can see, the Pico is soldered onto a 50 by 70 millimeter prototype board, which gives me room to solder extra electronics on for the signal conditioning. I have headers soldered onto the Pico itself to allow me to plug in a Raspberry Pi for debugging. They aren't necessary otherwise. And a list of the necessary parts can be found in the description below, by the way. Um, in order to get the Pico notched or the Pico soldered onto the board, I had to notch the board itself in order to give me access to the edge pins because you'll notice that the prototype board only has 18 rows and then the Pico has 20. So notching out those um, for those two extra pins on either side were necessary. Uh, speaking of debugging, <laughs> I used a Raspberry Pi 3 in order to do so. And um, I know the instructions say to use a 4, but I don't have a 4, and the 3 seems to work just fine. It's a little slow, but, you know, it works. Um, for kicks, I tried to get things work working on a Pi Zero, but couldn't get VS Code installed on it, and that was pretty important to me because having a visual IDE and debugging environment is uh, helps things to go faster. But everything else, including GDB, worked fine on the Zero itself, just, just for reference. And like I stated earlier, the Genesis controller uses a DB9 connector connection. And supply voltage is uh, goes in through pin 5 and the ground coming through pin 8. And from it you have 6 outputs and 1 input. Now the biggest problem that I had with using the uh, porting the 8051 code to the Pico is that the Pico's inputs are not 5 volt tolerant. Uh, if I'm interpreting the specifications correctly, for a supply of 3.3 volts, they recommend keeping inputs below 3.6 volts with an absolute max of 3.8 volts. So added voltage conditioning electronics for the 8051 only consisted of one resistor, but it's quite a bit more complicated here. And the way that I was able to get away with only one resistor is um, I have the select, just for that one output, I have that select line tied to 5 volts through a pull-up, 
In order to switch between 0 and 5 volts, I have the output at 0 volts to give 0 volts, and then I switch it to an input to output 5 volts here. And then for the six outputs from the controller, I just tied them to six inputs directly into the microcontroller itself. And the electronics for the Pico uh, implementation of this are a little bit more complicated, but I tried keeping it as simple as possible still. For the select outputs, I used a transistor to amplify the 3.3 volt digital signal to a 5 volt digital output. And then for each of the six inputs, I feed the signal through voltage divider resistors. On one side, on mine, I had, you might be able to notice that I used three 4.7k ohm 1206 surface mount resistors on one side for each voltage divider, and on the other side I used 3k and 6.8k ohm resistors. And the dif difference is only just because whatever I had offhand in order to achieve this result. As far as the case, I 3D printed it using PLA. My goal in this design was that everything must be snap-in. And I'm really happy that I was able to get, uh, was able to make something that holds on to the DB9 connectors this firmly. There are actually two nubs on the inside which hold on to, clip on to the uh, holes on the DB9 connector itself. And since I printed this, I tweaked the design slightly because you might have noticed that I cracked this side of it because the wall is just so thin, so I thickened that, that wall a little bit. And then I provide a little bit more clearance for the clips on the front and the back so that it isn't so tight when it comes on. Now onto the software. I'm going to go over a couple of quick things regarding the software that might seem odd. Um, by the way, the software is available in GitHub and I have a link to the GitHub repo in the description below. Uh, I used a observer design scheme here uh, to loosely couple the Genesis controller to the USB keyboard. And this will allow me in the future to swap out the USB keyboard with a USB gamepad instead, um, whatever I'd like here, which I'll be doing in the future. So the Genesis controller interacts with this interface and it doesn't have any information about what this interface is uh, controlling and this interface um, interacts with the actual USB keyboard. So once I get the gamepad, set up, then I set up a gamepad Genesis controller observer, and I know that's that's just a mouthful down there, but I didn't know what else to call it. <laughs> the other thing that I wanted to point out was I'm actually using both cores of the Pico. Uh, the first, first core does all this setup, and then it goes into this uh, infinite loop down at the bottom here with the USB keyboard task, which calls uh, the tiny USB task. And the other core launches this timer process. And you'll find this note here, and this this was really weird and I didn't know what to do about it, that uh, Pico can't seem to handle reload times of six microseconds very well. And when I attempted to that, um, the trigger ranged between nine microseconds and 12 microseconds. And since this chip had two cores, I might as well just basically brute force it. Um, I'm in this infinite loop here, and at every 20 milliseconds, I do a eight cycles of sampling, uh, waiting six microseconds in between. And you'll find this information about the six button controller, and this is how the six button controller is, um, operates. If you go to the sources, I have links below. So I go sample it eight times, and then after it's sampled eight times, and it actually commits those signals to the USB keyboard, and then goes back to the top and waits another 20 milliseconds again. That's all I have to show. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments below or um, ask me in the GitHub repo. Um, thanks for watching.